on the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Welcome everyone. I hope you enjoyed my singing and it's true. I have here On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Why did I want to read this book? Well, it's something a little bit different, something uh, I, I wouldn't say I particularly read these sort of travel adventure books. And this is just a classic of American literature. It's promoted everywhere. I come across it in so many different people saying this type of book is good to read. You get something real interesting from it. So I said, hell to it. I'll put on my my most crappy clothes, my, my, my beanie, my worker's beanie, and I'll get on the road and get on reading this book. So it was published in 1957 and it's a nonstop adventure, I guess even called it a movement, uh, that blurs the the line between fiction and non-fiction. So it follows the, the first person account of Sal Paradise as he goes back and forth the USA with his good friend Dean Moriarty. So in reality, this was actually Jack Kerouac himself as Sal Paradise and then Neil Cassidy as Dean Moriarty, the the crazy adventurous bum who he, he travels with. It's this became, I guess, the voice of the beat generation, and it, it portrays that that sort of feeling of that time really, really intensely. The frantic energy, the movement, the the stepping out of the classic nine to five, the exploring different ideas and and sort of, you know, touches upon different other movements as well doesn't talk particularly about free love but you can sort of see the startings of free love and this sort of thing and so it's uh it definitely is a a unique book in in essence and a u- unique time as well so what are some of the themes that i took from the book well travel is for one and the ups and downs of energy and you'd sort of think what does travel and energy have to do together but they are intertwined intensely and I, I learned this myself from traveling South America, Central America uh, for 14 months and just how important it is to maintain your energy levels and, and be aware of them. So it captures the monotony followed sometimes by the apathy and excitement of moving to a new place. All the time he's, he's going on the bus ride. So this is the, I always say the worst part of travel is the actual travel part. The, the the location, the plane ticket, the the bus ride, the walking on foot to the new area, whatever it is, the hitchhiking, however you do it, that, that part of travel really isn't that exciting. Sometimes you'll see some cool stuff out the window of the bus or of the plane, but for the most part, you're sitting there and you're waiting to get to this new place. And then sometimes you get to the new place and you are buzzing, you're excited. Hell yeah, like there's, I want to do all the things, all the things. And then other times you are just absolutely exhausted from your travel and all you want to do is go, man, is this another city? Man, why am I here? Like, what's the point of all of this? So he captures that pretty pretty nicely in the book and artistically his descriptions are, are touching, but that's a problem as well. They, they only touch upon something. And so the travel that he undertakes in this book is this rapid, frantic going from New York to San Francisco up into California down to San Diego, to all these different places, to Detroit, to wherever it is that he goes. He's going everywhere and it's at a frantic speed. And he doesn't talk about, you know, what it is to actually live in a place, what it is to to feel that sort of deeper connection to a place and and the real understanding of it. For me, it had it captures that shallow effect, which you do feel, but didn't go on to the next point of, of travel, of being on the road, which is sort of staying in a place for a while and getting to know that because if you're constantly on the road, that's all you're going to have. You're going to have these shallow experiences in, in one place and, and the next. It's uh, It actually got me thinking a little bit. So I'm recording this 2021, so post-COVID more or less. I mean, it's still going on, but no one has really traveled extensively, at least not from Australia in the typical sense. And it got me thinking, you know, how much... Uh, passion have we lost because how much energy how much what has the world missed out on this past year and i think it would you know i'm hoping sort of in you know maybe five ten years time we'll we'll be able to get some data and look back and say oh yeah this really important thing happened here maybe average energy levels drops maybe maybe travel does give a lot of purpose or meaning to people in in their lives you know there could be a lot of things um so it, it did get me thinking, man, um, you know, travel is a, is, a, is a hell of a thing to do. It is really, really fun. 
So the other one is madness and it's an unstoppable force if let loose. So it can be controlled, but once it's out on its own, once it has the, the limits and regulations taken away, madness is a, um, a very intense thing. And so he's, I'm talking more about here the madness of an individual r- compared to the madness, say like the, the madness of crowds, the book by Douglas Murray, that that's talking about in the group sense, but in this you have a, a particular individual and, and you know, some of the people in the book, some of the other characters definitely have a, a tinge of it, but the, the character of Dean Moriarty is well and truly mad. And so I, I wanted to say it was purely destructive, but I, th- I think that's wrong. I think it's mostly destructive, but it has its moments. There is a creation of some sort that can be gotten from from madness. For example, in this book, I, the, the character of Dean is is quite interesting. You do get drawn into his character and say, man, this guy's, you know, what would it be like to be around this person for a day, a month, a year? What is this energy that he has, this this constant moving, this ability to treat people badly, but also love them intensely at the same time and, and, and switch between these different states? There's definitely something... Um, creative in it but it's also very destructive so um, in the book you can see just how bad this gets because there are a lot of enablers and justifiers of his behavior he treats people terribly terribly Uh, he has three different wives he's always hooking up with different girls he's got five different kids i believe and he treats them all terribly but they they justify his behavior as saying you know this is just dean this is what he does the main character, Sal, as well, you know, sort of acknowledges this is what he's like. This is who he is as a person. And I think that's fine. But you can't also then go around and, and complain like he, like the character Sal does in the book where he calls him a rat, where he says, you know, Dean actually has done these bad things to me. You, What did you think you were getting in for? You know, you were enabling this sort of behavior. Don't be surprised when it comes around and bites you on the ass. And... Uh, I, I guess it's similar to violence. So Juan and I talked about violence in one of our podcast episodes and it's it's entrancing, but it's almost too real when it gets close. I think we all love that that character of the Joker in the Batman series or that that crazy psychopath on the on the hunt, on the loose. You know, there's how many shows are there about serial killers and people with madness, the um, Unibom, Unibomber, people like that. There is something drawing to it something entrancing but when you get too close to it it's it's not fun you you only see the now downsides to it i've i've met a couple of people who are uh you know that have that frantic energy that that movement and you can take it for a small dose but goddamn, you got to watch yourself because you'll get bitten on the ass real quick so my personal observations uh, i was a bit disappointed that it didn't show the mundane the stress anxiety of what the road is actually like. He talks, so he's talking all about, you know, we're going to go do these places. We do take these tremendous amount of drugs and alcohol and whatnot. But then he doesn't talk about the hangovers. He doesn't talk about the feeling absolute shit, the the trying to, you know, work out money situation. Like for him, money always sort of just appears out of nowhere and everything works out well. But it, in the end, it usually does, but he didn't talk about that stress and anxiety that comes along as well, where you go, I have no idea what to do in this situation. Like, what the hell is this? What, you know, the, the mundane sort of stuff that being on the road is actually like, he doesn't talk about that. So this is, I felt if I was, you know, if I hadn't seen the road before, if I hadn't traveled extensively, I, I would have said, oh, wow, man, this seems like an absolute blast. But it's like, nah, you got to, there's, there's downsides to it as well and you can't just per you can portray a book he obviously have has done a, a, a book about the road which doesn't show those aspects but I, I feel it's a little bit not sneaky but just not super genuine as well the it, it needs emphasizing just how boring monotonous and anxiety provoking traveling can be the other thing was um, the the character of Dean he's always going Whoo! and and like rubbing his belly and 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 it's got this like this definite energy about him but i every time he said woo wee i just imagined the character from the rick and morty show mr what is it mr butthole poopy pants or something like that where he's always going ooh-wee, ooh-wee. so 
I don't know. That was just something that's really, truly personal observation right there. Not useful at all. So in summary, it's a, it's a strong, uh, has a strong start, but the longer it got, the more it dragged on. I found myself disliking the main characters. And for me, that's a death knell. If, if I start to dislike the main characters, um, the book is, is not going to end well for me. It betrays the, the frantic energy of, of a bizarre time. And it is truly a snapshot of life. And I think if you are intrigued about what the beat generation was like, what that counterculture movement of the 1950s, 1960s was like and embodied in a single person in this character of Dean Moriarty, I think you can get that. But you have to temper that with a bit of reality saying, okay, this is slightly fictional as well. Not all of this actually occurred in the book. So I'm giving the book On the Road by Jack Kerouac a 6 out of 10. Look, it's okay, but I, I can't say this was... If it's a classic of American literature, I'm obviously a, um, a neophyte or whatever it is where it's just um, th- this book didn't impress me that much. So uh, what's something pragmatic I'm going to take away from it? Well, I think uh, judging madness, I wanted to say when I was writing the, the sort of notes for this review, madness is a bad thing. Like it's always destructive. But, you know, it got me thinking about it a little bit and said, you know what? Madness does have its place in the world, but if it's let loose completely, it, it, it sort of needs some boundaries to work in. You know, the, the, the artist in a haze of glory just scribbling and doing this painting within 20 minutes, sort of, you know, Van Gogh-esque or whatnot, that, that has its place in the world and it can br- bring tremendous value, but it, it can be a destructive force as well. So it does need to have, have some limits. So uh, what are your thoughts of On the Road by Jack Kerouac? Does it make you want to travel? Does it make you want to find a crazy friend and, <laughs> and, uh, and just spend time around them? It's uh it's a it's a fascinating book, but yeah, it's uh it's something something a bit different as well. So that's it for today, Karen out.